Hey folks, it's Cal just with a quickish one. This is uh, another video about cars for those of you who like bikes, unfortunately. Um, but what we're looking at here <coughs> is a little box I've had to create because I have a car which runs on E85 and has a wideband O2 sensor. These two guys are the two most recent failures of my Bosch LSU 4.9 wideband O2 sensors. The first one lasted about a year and the second one lasted about a month. The reason the first one lasted a year was it was great when my car was running on 98. When I switched to E85, it died and I didn't know why, so I replaced it. Then the other one died only a month later. And I did some reading and I'll put a link in the description, but the issue is that when your car is cold in the morning on a cold start and there's moisture in the exhaust, if there's moisture on the tip of the O2 sensor, when it starts to heat up, so when the control unit starts to heat the sensor up, if there's moisture on it, it blows itself. <laughs> Not in a good way. <coughs> it basically dies and you require a new one. So this little bad boy here is a solution to that specifically for my vehicle. So based on the link I'm going to show you in the description, uh, this is a really, really cheesy diagram I've created as to what you need to do. And what you need to do is not fire up the O2 control box until the engine is warm. Well, warm enough that any moisture on the tip of the O2 sensor has been evaporated. So you don't start heating the O2 sensor until then. A nice simple way is if you can do it is if you use a thermo switch connected to the coolant that detects engine temperature or coolant temperature and when that thermo switch hits an appropriate value it triggers and power is provided to the O2 sensor control box but not until then. So basically the O2 wideband O2 will never be running until that point. If the wideband O2 you have is part of a Haltech or something where you can actually control when the wideband's powered up, great, use the software. Uh, but I use stock, um, um, stock ECU with custom ROM on mine to do all the E85 and flex fuel, but that doesn't actually control the powering on of the O2 sensor. So what did I do? So in my case, uh, I've created a little control box here. And what this is, is the relay and what this relay does is it provides the 12 volt power out to the O2 sensor. This relay is triggered by a 5 volt control line. Now where does that 5 volt control come from in the car you might be asking and this is the reason it's specific to my vehicle is because I have a UT comp trip computer and that's it there basically running right now that's that's the display for it it does a bunch of stuff I have other videos on the UT comp um, but it's got a whole bunch of trip computer stuff yes it's very high consumption because I'm running the 85 at the moment um, a whole bunch of stuff fuel tank levels lambda so what you're seeing here is before the switch is connected, you see my lambda reading is 1.5. Um, now, if I started the car right now with the engine cold, there's a chance I might damage that sensor. So I actually right now have a switch which I can use that turns it off. So you have to turn it off there. But <clears throat> the UT Comp has a programmable 5 volt output wire which you can tr set to trigger to bring the voltage on that wire high to 5 volts based on anything you choose and in my case I can choose engine temperature. So because that system, let me turn the car off, it's, so because that system uses a 5 volt trigger I needed a relay which could take a 5 volt control but switch a 12 volt output. However, I don't actually have any decent sources of 5 volt power for this relay because the relay circuitry is powered by 5 volts as well. So there's a 5 volt trigger wire and a 5 volt power wire. 
And to do that, <coughs> I happen to have uh, lying around from a project ages ago a 12 volt uh, to 5 volt, well, 12 volt power supply takes 12 volts in, and with this little adjustment here, you can drop the voltage down. So I've configured the voltage on this power supply to be 5 volts, so it feeds the relay. So the way this will work is once it's plugged in, is that when the UT comp sends 5 volts down this wire, it will trigger the relay, which will pass 12 volts power from the input rail to the output rail. Um, and I've got this nice little long wire here. And that will connect into the O2 sensor controller itself. So yeah, just in case you have a car which is cooking o, uh, wideband O2 sensors left, right and centre, uh, read the article, I'll post, as I said, I'll paste the information, but you want to have a engine temperature controlled means of switching it on. What is the appropriate engine temperature? I don't know the answer to that exactly, but what I'm going to do is set mine to be around about, uh, say, 55 degrees centigrade, because that would mean that even on a hot day, that the engine itself is not going to start Right, the uh, coolant's unlikely to start at 55 degrees, even, the, even if the engine's cold. So basically, I just want to make sure that the O2 sensor never, ever turns on unless the engine's already warmed up a little bit, blown out all the moisture from the exhaust, blown the, out the moisture off the tip of the O2 sensor itself, and then happily start the O2 controller and have us living with a nice, long-lasting, reliable O2 sensor. All right, so uh, just going to demonstrate the uh, very, so far, currently messy setup and very temporary installation uh, of the 5-volt triggered power control for the Wideband O2 sensor. Uh, you probably can't tell, but the sensor is an LC2. Let's see if I get some light down there. Uh, ignore the flickering, it's just the fact that the LED strobes. So, LC2 wideband controller, the 12 volt output uh, input to that is controlled by my little box here. The yellow wire coming out of that box goes to the 5 volt output control of the UT comp. Now, if I take my little uh, power probe here and touch that, you'll note that there's well, you probably can't see that, that actually, because it's so bright. There's zero volts on that wire. Now, currently, the configuration for the 5-volt output says it's called Digital Output User. And I've said Temperature Engine. Turn it on above the high threshold. And the threshold right now is 35 degrees. And I'll note the engine right now is 30 so it's turned off. Now, note there are no lights on the LC2. Let's change that now to, oops, on the wrong way, 26 degrees or something. I'll save that and you may hear a click. So let's actually hold the camera down here and try and get the LC2 in shot when I press save on the UT comp. You see that click? So because the engine is 30 degrees and the value in the system was like 26 or something, the, the wide band is now booting up. The flashing green means it's heating. When it's hot, so you see it right now it's reading 0.59 lambda, it'll go to 1.5 when it heats up. Yeah, there we go. It has heated up. So obviously I have to tidy things up, use connectors on the wires, proper connectors that you know, you, you know, butt connectors which I can disconnect, etc. On those, and then securely mount that control box somewhere under where all the rest of my crap goes. And that means from then on. I can control whether my O2 sensor comes on purely by adjusting that number and pressing save in my UT comp. It's pretty neat.